Let's profile external displays linked up to a PC with Calbright Profiler. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This Calibrite Profiler Guide will work for any displays that you have linked up to your PC, whether you have a laptop or a desktop system. Do note, if you have a hardware calibration capable display, you are better off using the display manufacturer software to get the best calibration result possible because those software would access the 3D LUT on the display, whereas Calibrite Profiler will only do a software profiling on those particular displays. For compatible calibration devices, any devices from Calibrite or X-Rite that's compatible with Calibrite Profiler will work with this guide just fine. Do note that I will be using their Pro device, which are going to give me more control over the profiling parameters. However, if you have one of their starter device, you can certainly follow through with this guide. Some settings may not be available. With this in mind, we are working with a computer operating system and there are settings that we need to change or alter in order for us to get the best profiling result possible. This is especially important if you have a laptop because there are extra sensors and cameras and sometimes these can change the way how the color are being output on the internal and external displays. I'll leave a link to this guide in the description. I highly recommend that you check that out first and then come back to follow on this guide. If you have multiple display link up to your system, you want to make sure that they are in extended mode and not in duplicated mode for you to be able to properly profile these displays. And lastly, for the display that you are going to profile, you want to leave the display on and running for at least 15 to 30 minutes. This way the backlight has the opportunity to properly warm up and stabilize before you start the process. This is also going to give you the best profile result possible as well. And with that in mind, let's quickly talk about our setup. I have my Dell XPS 15 link up to my BenQ PD 2706UA. This is a 27 inch 4K Pro Designer display from BenQ. This is a model with the ergo arm you see there is being mounted to a table. The display is being linked up to the laptop via USB type C. The calibration device we'll be using is the colorimeter from Calibrite. This is the Display Plus HL. And there is some distinction with the new HL device and that's the fact that they can actually go into profile mini LED backlight displays. So if your display backlight technology that you have linked up to your system is mini LED, you want to be certain that you have either the Display Pro HL or the Display Plus HL. Otherwise, that backlight option may not be available. So on our external displays, before we do anything else, we have to choose the color gamut that we want to profile these display in. On certain displays, for example, like this BenQ, there are multiple different color gamuts that you can choose from. And that's also another reason why I like BenQ display as well, because I know for their pro creative display line, they have gone in and calibrate these from the factory already, but we're going to refine the result and get the result to be even better. For example, if I go into the color color mode, you can see that I have all those options from sRGB, Display P3, DCI P3, Rec 709. You can choose these different color mode options depending on the creative discipline that you're doing. For example, photography, sRGB will be fine. Display P3, I would say this is going to be the best overall color gamut that you can choose for both photo and video. However, if you just do video only, you can choose Display P3 or even just Rec 709 as well. This is really up to you as a creator. What I'm going to do for this one is I'll choose Display P3 as the color mode and we're going to go back from the menu. And I'm going to go into the display setting briefly just to quickly show you the extended display mode on a PC. So if you have multiple displays link up to your system where you have a laptop and a external display link up to it, you can see that the displays are pretty much next to each other. And right here in the bottom, it pretty much say extend these displays. You want it to be in that option. If they are in duplicate display, this is not going to work. Another thing that I also want to point out is that right below here, there is the color profile. You don't really need to go in and set or change anything because the program will apply a linear profile before it starts the entire process. And with that in mind, we are going to launch Calibrite Profiler. While the program is launching, one thing that I do want to mention as well is that because your display may have multiple color gamuts, one thing that you can certainly do is to go in and profile your display for each different color gamut and name that color mode in the profile name itself. And we're going to show you that as well. This way you can 
change between different profile as you switch between different color modes. This is something that you can do. Personally, I recommend keeping it simple and use the largest color gamut possible, which is display P3 and just call it a day. But this is all really up to you. All right, we have Calibrite Profiler launch. It has already recognized my Display Plus HL is active. For monitor, I will choose to do a profiling in advanced mode. I will click on next and it will jump to my laptop display to which I will choose that I want to profile this BenQ PD2706 UA. So from this drop down list, this is where you can choose a different backlight option. If you're uncertain, white LED is always a safe bet that you can choose. However, for me, I know that for BenQ SW and PD displays, BenQ recommends that we use RGB LED, so I am going to choose that. And one last thing I want to point out from this drop down list as well is that because I have the HL device, this would be the Pro HL or the Plus HL, you would have access to this mini LED option. If you don't have these HL devices, this mini LED option that I'm highlighting right now won't show up. So if your external display is a mini LED backlight variety, you want to get the HL device to run a proper profiling on those. All right, I have that selected. I'm going to start with photo. And simply enough, right on top here, this is the workflow. I'm going to start with the white point. So I'll click on that and I'm just going to choose the D65 for now. But if I want to change to D50, I can certainly do that. This will be for any type of printing pre-press. If you want to do that, you can. You can also choose custom to which there are many options you can choose from, from dialing in a color temperature, measuring a color temperature, setting this to native. There are many options you can choose in the custom variety. As far as luminance go, what I'm going to do for this display is that I am going to choose a custom and I'm going to profile my display to 80 nits or 80 candela. The range that I recommend for both photo and video and photo, especially if you print, if you're going to profile your display is anywhere between 80 to 120 nits. This is going to avoid a lot of the downfall of the print coming back from a lab really dark when everything looks great on the display. Profiling your display to that nit range is definitely going to help. Now I'm choosing the darker end of things on the 80 nits and this is based on over two decades of experience doing this. 80 works well for me. However, you want to do this based on the environment. So if your environment is brighter, you may choose 100 or 120. One recommendation that I have in this range is that you want to go in and increase these nit value by a factor of 10 points every time. So going from 80 to 90 or 90 to 100. If you increase it by five points, you're not really going to see that much of a difference with our you know, human vision. For now, I'm going to choose 80, but you can also do different options. Native, you can do custom, you can measure illuminance. We're going to click on next. As far as contrast ratio, I am going to leave this at native, which is default, but you can certainly choose different options in the custom. You can type in a black point. You can measure a back point. There are different things you can do. I'm going to choose default for this one. Gamma, because I'm doing photos, I'm going to leave this at 2.2. However, if you set your display to either DCI P3 or for instance, Rec 709, one thing that you can do in here is to go in and choose a custom gamma. So if you're doing video work, my recommendation is to use a gamma of 2.4 and you can dial that in and save it out. I'm going to cancel this for now. One more thing that I also want to point out as well is you can choose sRGB or BT1886. There are only three devices that have access to BT1886. That would be the i1 Display Plus. That would be the Calibrite device. If you update the license to work with Calibrite Profiler, you can certainly use that. Or the Calibrite Display Plus or the Display Plus HL, which is the device that I have. These will allow you access to BT1886. Other devices, you won't have access to BT1886 uh, gamma curve. So for that, I'm going to choose 2.2, but that's just something to note. I'll click on next and in this screen, I'm going to leave everything at a default value because they are pretty much good the way how they are. And when it comes to pass set for time, I'm going to choose 118. However, for your own profiling, I recommend choosing either the advanced 211 or advanced plus 461. And do note that when you click on the advanced or advanced plus, you can add images as well, or your own images. You can drop that in there and Calibrite Profiler will generate a few extra patches for the program to measure. For now, I'm going to choose 118. I'm going to click on next. I have my device connected and the preset is showing yellow. That means I've gone in and changed these parameters. And what I can do is I can save this as a preset so that next time when I come in, I can just simply choose the preset and run through the calibration right away without having to dial these settings in every time. So I'm going to call this one my BenQ PD L80. That's for a luminance of 80 or 80 nits. I'll click on save and I'll click on start measurement.
For this, the only thing I can really change is the brightness on the display. We're not going to go and change the contrast or do an RGB balance. I'll click on continue. All right. And now I'm going to take my device with any Calibrite device that is a colorimeter like this. What you simply do is lift the cap up like so. Just pull it up just a little bit like that and just rotate this towards the back of the device exposing a lens. You can run a profiling in a bright environment because in the front there is felt lining that prevents light from straying into the device itself. And on the device there is also a counterbalance. You just simply press on it a little bit and your cable can simply go up and down like that. No need to put a lot of force on it. I'm going to align this on the display now by hanging it in the circle. Now the other thing, because I don't have the display tilt back, notice how this is wobbly on the display. So what I'm gonna do is angle the display back like so verifying that the device is laying flat on the display this way, no stray lights are coming in, and I'm going to click on next. The first thing it's going to do is a brightness adjustment. Right now, my panel is showing at 218, which is too bright. I'm going to go into the menu, color, brightness. You can certainly use a shortcut to access this as well, but for now, we're gonna go through the menu, and for this, I'm gonna pull this down to around, let's start with 40 and see where we land at. So at 40, we're still at 101 right now, which is still a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna bring this down even further to around 30. 30 is getting me 81. That is a really good result. I'm gonna go back on this and I will simply click on next and it's going to start the measurement process. So once this is done, we'll come back and we'll do some validation. And I'll give you some extra tip for these displays as well. So it has finished the measurement process. I am going to click on next. These are actual colors that were measured. And for this, we are going to give this profile name. I'm just gonna modify this a little bit. And when you launch this the first time, it's going to set the reminder for four weeks. You can certainly put in a username and an email address, but what I'm going to do is set mine to none. The recommendation time is to go in and reprofile your display every four weeks or so at the maximum. This way you guarantee that you're always going to be using a consistent display and seeing consistent results. For now, I'll set mine to none because I run so many calibrations anyway or profiling. I'll click on save. And in the program, I can certainly do before and after, sample all these photos, but rather than doing any of those, what I'm gonna do is a profile validation. So with Calibri Profiler, I can choose to validate this in the Color Shacker Classic 24, but I can also use Digital SG96 patches. For now, for time, I'm gonna use 24. So we'll be using that. I'll click on next and we'll position this right back in the center of the display. I'll click on next and you have to click on start measurement. If not, you'll be staring at that white circle. All right, now that it's finished the process, I'm going to click on next and take the device down from the display. So the result that we're able to achieve with this particular profiling is that the average of all the patches is 0.5 and the max for one of the patch is 1.4. This is a really great display profiling and one that's going to be really awesome. So what you can do is click on save result. If you want to save this out to the desktop, you can certainly do that. So I'll be saving this to a download folder. We'll just save this as is right now. And you can always reference that as a result. Now, something to keep in mind as well is that for the general Delta E value, anything below two is considered great. Anything below three is considered good. Then we can get anything and or everything that is below two like this. This is producing a really great result for us. So once I'm done with this, I can click on finish. And the great thing about this is that the program has already gone in and set the profile for the display. So I can right click and on the desktop and click on display setting. And when I go to the PD display, we can see that it is already setting the BenQ PD profile that we have just created. You can certainly choose other profile from this list as well if you have other ones. But I think that Calibrite Profiler made this easy. In the utility section of the program, there is Profile Manager. You can click on that. And in Profile Manager, we can see the profile that we have right now. You can't really activate it, but if I click on another profile, I can activate another profile that 
is for this display. I can also choose to, for instance, go and delete a profile as well. So you can use this to clean up your profile on the display rather easily. And also when you click on it, it will also give you a detail of what that profile is as well as you know, parameters of the profile and so forth as you're seeing there. I'm gonna click on back and go home. And I wanna quickly show you one more thing because we have saved the preset out, I can go into monitor. For instance, I'll go into profile monitor, I'll click on next. And the next time I come into the program, if I want to just simply follow through in the exact same step again, I would choose, for example, BenQ PD L80, and that's pretty much it, what I have to do. So once I'm done with that, I can click on next and I can start the profiling process right away without having to go through the program again and set all those settings up. Anyway, I hope that you find this external display calibration helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in our retrust.